Here's everything you need to know to start using rooms effectively in Revit, including how to find missing rooms, how to get a room to stop at a ceiling, even if the ceiling is sloped. My name is Jesse Dom. I'm a practicing BIM manager teaching you Revit for free. Let's dive in. Let's go over to the architecture tab and click on room. Now room is a point in space that just wants to fill an unavailable area like a gas. In this case, we have room not enclosed. If I turn off thin lines, you can see as soon as I move my mouse inside the building, it wants to fill these available areas. Now, why is it drawing this blue border? If I hit escape and click on this wall, I've got room bounding turned on by default for all of these walls. I could turn this off for a particular wall, hit escape, go back to room, and now it's gonna ignore that wall when trying to figure out where that room is supposed to be. Let's undo. Other things that could be room bounding are floors or ceilings. So long as they've got this box ticked, columns can also be room bounding. Just look in your properties palette to see if that field exists. Now I'm gonna change this back to hidden line because that's a bit tidier. When I go to place a room, the X that you see here is how I'm going to be able to select that room in the future. And the cross section is where a tag will automatically populate for other plans. If I click to place this room and hit escape and click on the room tag itself, the room is highlighted and I have the ability to modify either of these numbers. Before I placed it, this number was a question mark. If I change this room to 100 and click somewhere else, now if I go to place another room, the next room that's going to be placed is room 101. I'm going to undo that because I don't want to place that one just yet. Other information that you can see is it's 9 meters square and 92 square feet. If I click on the room tag itself, the type of the tag right now is showing both areas. I can pick a different type if I want to show different information. Now that's with the room tag selected. I don't, I'm not able to actually modify the room data itself. To modify the room data, I need to be able to click on this X. So it's useful to know where I've placed it. Inside here, we have a whole bunch of instance parameter data, things like number, room name, and a whole bunch of other information that we can use in schedules later. The upper limit is based off of currently just the ground floor plus 4,000 millimeters above. That's fine for now, but I'll show you how we can get that to stop at the ceiling level later. Let's delete this room because we don't need it yet. Now, I don't have a lot of walls inside here, but I wanna separate out the spaces. The way that we do this, if I hit escape, is by room separator lines. Now, if I were to just draw a line along here and here, I can see these lines and I can place a room and it's going to fill this even though I don't have walls to fill these areas. I want to separate my kitchen from my living room. I click and I can draw that, but this line disappears. Now, there's a couple ways that we can find these lines. First off, I will tell you that if we turn on wireframe, this line is actually just being hidden by a floor. Other times, if you go visibility graphics, hit L for lines, expand lines, and come down to room separation lines. If you're working in an existing practice, it's not uncommon for these to be turned off because these lines are quite bright and people don't like them for some reason. In our case, wireframe will let us know what we're working with. I am going to turn on thin lines even though it's a little bit harder to see. With the room separation line selected, I can hit create similar, come to this corner, draw it down to this point, uh, separate our hallway, Let's come to this corner and draw it out of 45 for a meter and then go straight across to this point and I can start placing my rooms now. So I made this area to be a specific area so that I could call it entry. I can place this and see it's already becoming room 101. I'm going to change that back to room 100 and then I'm going to get an elements have duplicate numbers. If I click somewhere else to ignore that for a moment, I want to see if I've got a room schedule. And by default, within this template, we do have a room schedule. If we don't have a room schedule already, we can go to Schedules, Schedule Quantities, Find Rooms, select that, and click OK. You'll want a few fields like Name, Number, and maybe Level. Click OK. And now you'll have a list of all of the rooms. Now this room that says not placed, that's because even though you deleted a room, it doesn't mean that the room has left the building. If I want to delete that room outright, I can click on this one and click delete. This will delete the selected room. Go back to ground floor, click on this, and write entry. Now I can model more rooms. Click room, and we're just going to go around and place the room in the middle of each of the available areas. Place that there, there, and we'll work our way around counterclockwise. 
Now if I turn off my visual style wireframe, and go back to hidden line, I can see that I've captured the whole interior of my house because it's all blue. Let me go around and name these rooms real quick. All right, real quick, I called these living, kitchen, dining, laundry, pantry, master bath, hall, bathroom, closet two, bedroom two, master closet, and master bedroom. If I go back to my room schedule, I've got all of these listed out here, and currently they are listed sequentially. If I close this schedule and go back to the room schedule, all I have are the numbers. So I like my room schedule too, so I can right click on this one, delete it, right click, rename, and get rid of the two. If I double click on this building section head, now I find this invisible X and I click on that to select this room. If you can't see this, you can always go to your visibility graphics, come down to rooms and make sure they're turned on and make sure there are no filters potentially hiding the room. If you still can't find it, stick around because I'm gonna show you something else. If I select this room, you can see that it's not being stopped by this sloped ceiling here. Now by default, Revit has this turned off but something that you're going to want is to come down here to area and volume computations, click on this and select the areas and volumes. As soon as you select that, click OK. This room will now be using the sloped ceiling as its upper extents. Now let's go back to the ground floor. Now, if you've ever been modeling a building and you tried to place a room and it looks like you can place it, but then as soon as you click it disappears, how do you find that room? For example, I'm just going to delete the master bathroom and I'm going to change the height of this floor to 20. Now if I go to place a room and if I want to use my master bathroom, I can click on this and select master bath and I'll be replacing the room that otherwise just exists somewhere in the, in the project. Now if I go to click, I get a warning that says none of the created elements are visible in the view, but it created the room. It actually placed it somewhere. Now if I move this section up here, go to the section, I can try to select everything, use the filter, tick none, and select rooms, click OK. I've got my rooms available, they're not showing up here. What's actually happening is the room is stopping at the next available element because this floor is room bounding. We do want them to be room bounding because I don't want the room over here to go deeper than the thickness of the tiles. So what happens is as soon as there's an airspace, there's a gap between these floors, the room itself will stop at the top of that room. So if I change this back to 10, because that's what its thickness is, the room will then fill the available space. And that includes going up to the ceiling, which is also room bounding. Having the volume turned on enables us to do a lot of things, but we do need to pay attention to the way that our building is modeled to make sure that we haven't made any mistakes with where we've set certain elements, in particular floors. Let me just undo to the point where we deleted the selection because I liked it how everything was. One more thing, if I have a section and I want to actually tag a room, I can click tag room and place this tag anywhere that this room shows up. Thank you very much for following. If you haven't already, please subscribe. See you in the next one.